Hello and welcome back to another Bear Egg review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Emmett's Constructo Mech from the Lego Movie. This particular Lego kit, I have been waiting for this for what seems like 10 years. The movie actually came out in February of this year, 2014, and right now it's May. So it's actually only been a few months, but I, I have been that thirsty for this uh, this kit uh, that it, it's it's just felt like an eternity waiting for it. So I am so excited to dig into this. So let's take a look at. Uh, the box first, really quickly. You've got the the cover art just showing you the actual piece from the movie, the vehicle slash robot from the movie. You got this little action scene right here. Unikitty transforms into Angry Kitty, starts chasing Skeletron. You got a little inset here, just showing the minifigures. The same thing you see on the side. Obviously, four minifigures included. I guess some people could argue that it's actually only three, uh, because two of them are duplicates. However. Uh, one of the great things, uh, and any great toy company knows about army building, so these these two Skeletrons, these are things you're going to want as a collector, uh, or as a diorama builder, or what have you, you're going to want to uh, army build these guys, just like the robot, uh, the robot police in the movie, you want to army build as many of these. I wish Hasbro would take some tips from the Lego group on army building, because, uh, well, Hasbro's uh, Star Wars action figure case assortments are a whole nother conversation, but they are just absolutely terrible lately for army building, uh, stormtroopers and things like that. So anyway, as you can see, it comes with Angry Kitty, and that's an exclusive with this kit. She's the angry version of Unikitty, uh, so that's only available with this set. On the back of the box, you've got, as you can see, yet another uh, similar display uh, of the robot. You've got Angry Kitty is now stomping a Skeletron, so it's a slightly different uh, little diorama and you got another Skeletron being eaten up by the uh, dumpster hander. Then you've got this little insets here of all the different articulations that are possible on this robot. Great stuff. Let's go ahead and dig in. So here we are. I've got it all laid out. Man, is it just me or just please tell me it's not just me uh, who smells the box when you open it. it smells the contents. Man, just Oh, do you smell, do you smell, if any of you collect comic books, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, it smells like a brand new fresh comic book, when you're the, you're the first one who reads it, you know, oh, that, I can't get over that smell. Uh, anyway, so, uh, this is uh, 708 pieces, uh, not an overwhelming build, there's one, two, three, four, five bags, we've got cardboard backed instructions, it's great, we got the book, and the sticker sheet. Now this is not this is not bad. Not an overwhelming amount of stickers. You get quite a few here. I mean, there's quite a few. There's more than some other sets of this size that I've seen, but not not an outrageous amount. It's not like uh, Hasbro's uh, Generations Metroplex. That was a, a a sticker nightmare. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to start building this thing right now. Okay, well that was fast. So we're all done. Here it is. Looks great. Uh, before we get into reviewing it, I think I might be able to provide just a few tips. A few things I noticed during the build just now. Let's start with the roll cage. Uh, the roll cage here is constructed mostly of cylindrical pieces and hinged pieces all interlocking together. And so there's no real pieces on here that prohibit warping and twisting of the roll cage structure. Because you see it's all cylindrical pieces kind of rolling around in, their, in the slots that they're slotted into. So this can really deform quite a bit as you see. So uh, without any indicators on, on the Lego, on any of the Lego pieces to say like this is perfectly straight just this way, what I recommend is once you've built it, whether it's crooked looking or not, just go ahead and, and uh, you can just grab by this piece right here uh, and, and just twist it. You just want to twist it. Instead of fudging around with all these little joints and trying to get each one perfectly straight, just go ahead right here and grab this. This is the easiest thing I've found. And just twist it for and the whole rest of the structure just twist it until this is this piece is perfectly straight and you'll see the whole rest of the structure up here all these joints and hinges will conform uh, and be straight as well once you've got that that bottom plate straight I noticed uh, another thing this is just aesthetics uh, I guess I just recommend that these spotlights here you see how there are four studs facing backward into the light backing so it just look, seems to look good when you have the the four studs kind of straight and, and symmetric with one another. In other words, don't rotate them like this or diagonal. It just seems to look a lot better, I think. Uh, another tip, you know, this is not a huge Lego kit by Lego standards. However, there is a little bit of what looks to be repetition in this, a little bit, but some of it can be deceiving. Some of it appears 
to be repetition, but he's actually not. Like the arms, the arms look almost identical. These upper arm structures and the feet, they look almost identical. But and and the way the instructions are laid out, it's very easy uh, to get mixed up. As you're, this is a very, this is a pretty quick build. So as you're quickly uh, racing through the instructions, you can easily forget where you are and think that you're on one foot or another. So uh, there are some differences. They are sort of mirrors of one another. So. Anyway, just make sure uh, you're paying attention to what actually is repetition and what is independent builds. The only other thing I noticed during the build that I thought I should point out is the rubber band here. This claw hand made of these two shovels is, uh, is articulated with a rubber band. I guess I was sort of disappointed to see a rubber band. I mean, it's a standard thing now. You see this in Lego kits now. I, I personally just don't prefer rubber bands because you know in like five years it's gonna be worn out so and, and I don't know what to recommend either I mean springs wear out too metal springs wear out just like rubber bands wear out so it's nothing is future proof uh, but it's not a problem it doesn't really take away from any of this I think it's just my own personal uh, hang up on rubber bands not a big deal okay right away I just want to point out before we start that I am displaying this without the original flat smooth faced piece right here uh, the original that came with this kit is yellow. It's almost identical to what you see here, except it doesn't have the warning tape on here. Instead, it has what looks like a serial number printed on it. And that serial number is actually unique to each kit. So your serial number when you buy yours is going to be different than mine. Uh, and it's actually a password. It's an access code. If you play the Lego Movie video game on any of the home consoles, you enter the password that's printed on this brick right here. And you'll unlock, uh, I guess it, what I've heard is that you unlock Angry Kitty and Construction Pants in the game, whatever the heck that is. Uh, I don't play the game, so. Anyway, moving right along. The articulation is, uh, well, it's, it's really good for a Lego set. I mean, it's really, uh, it's capable of quite a bit of uh, movement, uh, like an action figure, actually. Uh, there are some big limitations, though. So what I think we can do is, uh, let's talk about what it, it is capable of doing. And then we'll get into what it's not capable of doing. So starting at the top, we've got these wrecking balls, these two wrecking balls. They move freely on these, these short chains here. These towers do not move, though. They don't move at all. The, the, the little bit of play that you see is just simply bending these stalks that they're mounted on. The canisters on the back, the tank, oh, it looks like fuel tanks, do not move at all. The shoulder pads actually are articulated. Cool, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Both of them. Uh, the arms are incredible. You've got this uh, hinged, uh, it looks like a ball socket, but it's actually a hinged and pegged joint right here. So you can rotate like this and also outward like this. Excellent. There's a simple hinge for the elbow, which is fine. Uh, it's too bad it doesn't bend forward as well, but this is that's fine. I mean, this is a Lego kit. This piston is brilliant. Look at this piston. It actually functions as a piston. Brilliant, and it looks just looks great when you're uh, articulating it. The roller uh, is fully functional; it, it spins this way, and also the roller itself uh, rotates within here. The uh, the other arm, same basic motion as the other arm, uh, except the claw hand is different on this one. It's got these two shovels. There's this rubber band keeping the tension on so that it snaps back. The cab, the cockpit has this roll cage. That you've got movement here. The roll cage itself swings out as well. Uh, excellent. No waist rotation. That's crazy. Look at this. No waist rotation at all. In the film, it spins around uh, 360 degrees, but uh, the actual toy has none at all. Uh, the legs are pretty cool. So they, they only rotate back. They don't rotate forward. So this, as you see here, standing like this, is as far forward as the legs will go. They don't they, they go backward and then they, they come forward and stop right here. So, okay, so here's some of the limitations and they do kind of suck, but whatever. Uh, it doesn't kill this this set. It's still an awesome set. Uh, but anyway, so basically combat is totally not, you're totally not able to simulate any combat uh, whatsoever with this. Uh, the wrecking balls uh, are on chains that are simply too short to reach the ground and bash anything. Uh, the wrecking balls themselves, uh, when, when you release these, these claws, this does not drop out because it's on, here, I'll pull it off. It's on this long stalk. You see that? So you can't really drop the wrecking balls on anything uh, either uh, if you're thinking of that. The arms cannot reach the ground to attack things on the ground. So uh, it can swat things out of the air, I guess, but it can't reach down and scoop anything up. It, the, the robot can't bend forward at all. So those are some limitations. Okay, so you know we have to do this. Comparisons to the movie. 
So since this is unlike other children's movies or action movies where, where toys are produced, you know, to merchandise off the movie, th these toys are Legos, and the movie is the Lego movie. So the toys, I would think, the toys would be in this one instance, uh, you know, of a Lego movie. The to the Lego toys should be exactly accurate to what you see on screen. I mean, they're Legos. So uh, I have to say, I was a little surprised. I don't know how everybody else feels. Maybe I'm silly for for being surprised at this, but this is actually totally inaccurate. There is almost nothing on this Lego kit that is what you see in the movie. Despite that, I love it. It's it's crazy. Like this is so inaccurate to the to what is seen on screen, and I still love it. I'm just in love with this set. So uh, let's get into it. I mean, look at this right here's a still from the movie. I mean, none of almost none of these pieces are. Uh, look, look right here, four three seven one zero, like a construction fencing or gate. This is here in the movie. You can even see uh, it's mounted on the lower uh, portions of the torso of the, v of the constructor mech in the movie. Uh, however, this is nowhere in this toy here. Uh, this glass right here, 47758, nowhere to be seen in the home version. Uh, 56891, this big construction wheel here, nope, not in the kit. This cog, nope. Uh, the 43121, that's a big one. That's a jet engine, actually. That, that 43121 is a jet engine. Not, not, it's, it's not present in the home. Uh, I mean, these, you would think that since not only are the pieces shown on screen in this movie, but their, their numbers, their actual identification numbers are shown on screen, you would think at least those would be present in the home set, uh, in the, in the toy. But they're not. I'm not, again, I'm not actually mad about this. It's just perplexing, that's all. I, I can't believe they actually named the pieces on screen in the movie, and they're not in the home <laughs> build. Let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, screen stills from the movie. I'm not aware that anybody else has done this yet, so it would please me to be the first. I think I'm the first. So let's start with the back. Uh, it looks like the, the two tanks... Maybe they're a little larger. There's certainly more uh, kibble underneath where they attach to the back of the robot. Uh, and they're also at an angle. You can see on screen uh, they're slightly angled away from one another, where on, on the home Lego kit they are perfectly parallel to one another. Moving right along, the roll cage. Clearly, uh, in this close-up, you can see that the roll cage that encloses Emmett in the cockpit, it looks like there's a uh, double bar. There's more than one set of bars uh, comprising the roll cage. You can see there's a, a few cylindrical pieces there uh, enclosing him in. Next, as we pull away and look at the whole upper torso, you can see it looks it looks similar. You know, there it's just sort of a the home kit is just sort of a smaller, simpler version. Almost everything on the the on-screen robot is represented in the home version, uh, just less detailed and smaller. So you can see the shoulders are almost identical. There's just a lot more greebles uh, on the on the front face of them. There's more. There's three lights on top of the, of each shoulder on on the movie, uh, where there are only two lights on the top of each shoulder on the home version. Um, what else? The uh, the canisters, the yellow canisters, they sort of look like tanks, like canister. I, I don't know what to call them. Uh, they're uh, they protrude out of the bottom of the torso, uh, and on 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 screen on, on the film, they they appear to protrude a lot much further. They extend a lot for, more further down. There's more exposed, and they're also rounded at the at the bottom. Whereas the home version, they're just straight. Uh, a lot more uh, stuff like this. As we pull away further, we can see a shot of the whole thing. So there's there's a few more lights. There's uh, two sets of four lights each, uh, eight lights total, at the the very bottom of the torso. You can see they're kind of glowing there. The tank treads, the the tractor treads on the feet, you can see here are definitely different on film than they are. The home version just has simple black treads. The underside, uh, I don't know what to call this, the groin, <laughs> the, cr the crotch, the, the very underside you can see exposed in this photo as we're, it's the robot sort of jumping over us, the audience. You can see there's a series of plates under there, uh, whereas the home version here you can see is uh, completely smooth, just the, the smooth bottoms of the, the bricks that comprise it. Uh, as we look at sort of the back, like three-quarter view, uh, the back and side of the, of the robot, you can see uh, on the back of the to uh, of, of the film version, there's a whole bunch of uh, 
uh, different angled bricks comprising the back structure. And then on the side flank, you can see, sort in this photo, it's not a very good uh, shot, but you can sort of see how on the side flanks, like the ribs, the sides of the ribs of the robot, there's just more greebles. Uh, whereas the side on the toy is just flat, just flat smooth. And then obviously the back of the, the construction mech on the home version, it's just the base plates. So you can see just exposed base plates on the back. Uh, so very, very different. So all that said, all that pointed out, uh, like I said before, I still love this set. This is uh, one, one of my favorites. Uh, it's the one I've been anticipating for a while. I have a theory as to why this was not, this ended up not being screen accurate. Uh, and that is maybe, maybe, uh, just maybe, it's it would have been too top heavy. Uh, in the film, you can see that the legs are, are pretty thin and spindly, whereas the upper torso that's completely supported by those two skinny little legs is is massive so I mean just just this home kit this more simplified home version uh, these little legs you can feel them they're really under under some tension here they're under some stress uh, and that's just this simplified version imagine a much larger one so maybe maybe that's part of the reason I'm not sure I will say okay this may sound stupid but uh, I, I there's a part of me there's <laughs> deep down in my heart that's hoping for maybe a UCS version. You know how Star Wars Legos have the UCS versions? There's a UCS Millennium Falcon, a much larger, much more uh, complex uh, screen accurate version of the Falcon, and there's a UCS X-Wing Fighter. So maybe, please, maybe Lego Group, later on down the line, produce a UCS version. I will say this, I was, uh, I was prepared to pay over $200, more than $200 for this, for this uh, Constructo mech. Uh, before I knew what it was, and when I just heard that they were making one, I was already anticipating paying upwards of 200 uh, for it. I had no idea. I mean, this is in the the fifty dollar, fifty to sixty dollar range. So I mean, you know, this is super cheap for what you get. Uh, so definitely, all the downsides, all the negative things that I've pointed out, I still say this is an absolute must-have. Totally worth the money. Now I know some people were concerned that they they felt that there were too few minifigures included with the set. The four minifigures: uh, Angry Kitty. Emmett, and then the two Skeletrons. You know, I've, I've heard that uh, that was considered to be too few for uh, a larger set like this. However, uh, I think maybe the reason that so few, only four figures were included, two of which are just simple clones of each other, uh, is maybe to keep the price down. It's is it, it could be possible that the Lego Group knew that this is one of the more anticipated sets. This robot appears at the climax of the movie, and and it's a big deal when it shows up. I mean, it's this that's a hero moment. Uh, so this robot is kind of like, I'm, I'm sure this is what every kid, including myself, big kid, you know, every adult and uh, little kid that saw the movie uh, has been has been waiting for. So maybe they wanted to keep the price lower. Now, uh, about those figures, uh, Emmett comes with a new face in this set. He has what I call a concentrating really hard face. As you can, or maybe it's supposed to be a, de a confident, determined face. But either way, that's definitely a new face. I haven't seen that in any of their sets. And uh, the other one, obviously, Angry Kitty, is just a masterpiece, an absolute must-have. I mean, get this set just for Angry Kitty. That would be my advice. I mean, you're not going to see her. I, I don't believe that you will see her in any other set. So it looks like she's going to be exclusive. So bottom line buy this. This is a must-have. If I haven't said it enough times already in this video, this is a must-have. Awesome. Uh, it displays very well. Um, it looks great uh, with the other LEGO sets on its own, on a shelf, uh, whatever you want to do. It displays great. I recommend not displaying it anywhere near a photograph of the one from the movie because it'll just kill it. It, it kills me every time when I look at them side by side. But just on its own, Awesome, absolutely awesome. That's the review. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Too many